case we're live and we have people joining do you want to wait a few minutes for everyone to jump come in missing lisa right lisa is here oh i can't see her She's oh there done. she is there she is oh, jazz if you can give me a thumbs up and i'll get started People are still joining. I didn't know if you wanted to wait a, a few minutes and allow more people to come in or if you wanted to start immediately. Mary, are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, so let me know what you want to do. If you want to wait a little more, there are 15 attendees at the moment. It's, it starts at six o'clock. Well, take it away whenever you're ready, Mayor. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> Well, good evening, Plainfield. I welcome each and every person to this evening's virtual town hall meeting. This is just one in a series of such meetings that we'll be having. And this evening, we will be providing you with updates on a number of issues. But primarily, this town hall's focus is going to be on the cannabis legislation and the business that stems from the passage of that legislation. Before we get started, I want to introduce to you the business administrator for the city, who some of you have met and some will be meeting for the first time. She will introduce the members of the cabinet and the participants on this evening's call, none other than Abby Levinson, business administrator for the city of Plainfield. Thank you, Mayor. Um, before I introduce the rest of the cabinet, I just want to take a minute to set expectations for this evening in terms of questions. We won't be taking live questions this evening, but we will be taking written questions. So if you have a question, please write it either in the chat box of the Zoom, in the Facebook comments if you're following along on Facebook, or in the YouTube comments if you're following along in, on YouTube. Feel free to write your question either in English or in Spanish, and we will get to the questions and read them out and answer them during the question and answer portion this evening. Please make sure you limit your questions to cannabis related items that are discussed this evening. With that being said, I wanna take a second to introduce the other members of the administration that are on with me this evening. We have Director Shep Brown, who is oversees health and social services. We have Director Lisa Burgess, our director of our police department. We have Director Kenneth Childress, who is the director of the fire department. We have Director Oren Dabney Sr., who is director of public works. We have Director Jazz Clayton Hunt, the Director of Communications and IT. We have Director Jackson, who is our Director of Economic Development. We have Director Jallo, who is our City Clerk. We have Director Mincello, our Corporation Counsel, and Director Ron West, our Director of the Finance Department. We also are blessed to have the presence of Superintendent Taylor from Recreation, who you all know and love, and Jeanette Aparicio from Economic Development will be helping us today with our translation efforts so we can reach both the English and Spanish speaking communities. And with that being said, Mayor, I send it back to you. Well, thank you for introducing members of the leadership team who work very hard every day providing services to the residents of the city of Plainfield. Um, before we get into some of the other presentations, I want to set the stage by reminding our residents that in 2020, I believe, there was a referendum about the legalization of cannabis. And our residents voted in overwhelming numbers in support of the referendum. And to give you what that support looks like by ward, 
In Ward 1, 74% of our residents were in favor. In Ward 2, 78% of our residents were in favor. When we come to Ward 3, that percentage stands at 77. And in the fourth ward, 74% of our residents in the fourth ward were in favor of legalizing cannabis. When you look at it globally across the city, in terms of all of our residents, 76% of Plainfielders voted in the affirmative to legalize cannabis. And so it is against that backdrop that we come to you this evening because we believe that additional decisions that will be made need to be a collaborative community decision. And so we are leaning on our residents this evening to give us a sense as to how they feel about the different segments of the cannabis business. But before we get to that, there are other things that we wanna share with you. And at this time, I will present to you our superintendent of recreation who will speak to you about our many recreational programs I give you Superintendent Ronnie Taylor. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Mapp. And as always, it's a pleasure to be with you this evening. Good evening, Plainfield. Um, I just wanna bring you a few updates about Parks and Recreation. We're just so glad and we've been missing you all that I thought it'd be too boring for me to sit here and give you updates. So my division, thanks to the media department has created a video that gives, brings the updates to you. And I'll be available at the end of this whole event to answer any questions you may have. So I look forward to seeing you all in the parks. It's 21 days until the pool's open. So we're ready for you. And I hope that I answer many of your questions in our video. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Ronnie Taylor, Superintendent of Plainfield Park and Recreation. I'd like to introduce to you today. Hola, yo soy Greg el Supervisor de Operaciones Acuáticas. Y esto es fin. We're here today to let you know the Plainfield Public Pools will open this summer. There will be a few restrictions due to COVID-19. We want to let you know that you can secure a free pool membership on Community Pass. Please visit our website for more information. Ya las piscinas van a abrir este verano, pero por la ca el caso de eh, COVID-19 hay un poquito de cambios. Para más información, Por favor, visita el sitio de Plainfield, por favor. The Division of Parks and Recreation, through its Workforce Development Program, is currently offering lifeguard training courses. You may sign up on Community Pass, and please call the office for more information. Hi, join us Saturday, June 5th at 9 o'clock a.m. at Cedarwood Park Pond for the City of Plainfield Division of Parks and Recreation Hooked on Fishing Not Drugs, New Fishing Challenge. It's our annual Family Fishing Derby where adults can fish for free without a license. Please join us, we provide limited bait and we do have poles for you to use. I think I got something. Please join us on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays at Plainfield's Hubstein Field at 9 o'clock a.m. for our Walk with Ease program. This program is geared to adults who want to become active again through a walking program with a trained instructor. Hope to see you there. Once again, the Plainfield Division of Parks and Recreation will operate the Summer Food Nutrition Program, offering free breakfast and lunch to all Plainfield youth ages 18 and under. These meals may be picked up at any of the Plainfield Public School sites from 11.30 to 1.30, Monday through Friday. Join us Sunday, July 4th in Cedar Report for our annual fireworks display. Due to COVID-19, this will be a drive-in event. Tickets will be available at Community Pass starting Monday, June 28th at 10 a.m. Get your ticket, hope to see you there. On behalf of the Plainfield Division of Parks and Recreation, I wanna invite you to the pools and parks this summer. Please adhere to the CDC guidelines and the signage in the park intended to keep everyone safe. See you at a park this summer.
Well, there you have it from our superintendent of recreation, some of the many programs that we had. Is there anything more you want to add, Ronnie? No, not at this time, Mayor, but I look forward to any, answering any questions. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I encourage our residents to contact our recreation division with any questions as we go forward towards a full opening of everything recreation. We are here to make sure that we provide decent recreational opportunities for our young people. So call City Hall or call the Division of Recreation. And with that, I will now pass the baton on to our Director of Community Development, who has been spearheading our COVID vaccine and response effort. And I give you Director Shep Brown. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, all who are assembled today. Uh, thank you, Ronnie, for that. Uh, it, it really sets the tone to what I have to say. Uh, in order for us to get back to the parks and get back to a life that we have uh, missed for the last year and a half, we need to get vaccinated. And so the moment that I'm going to take is really to talk about vaccinations. Right now, the city of Plainfield uh, has a 27% vaccination rate. It, it is indeed one of the lowest in the county. Uh, but having said that, there is some glimmer in that. There are significant amounts of individuals who've had their first dose already, uh, about 10 to 12,000 who have already had their first dose, but have not followed up with their second dose. And so I'm asking you, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, I need you to go and do your second dose. Now I wanna talk to the people who haven't gotten a, received their dose, first dose at all. Uh, this last year, we have lived in fear. Fear of what could happen to us, fear of losing family members, fear of what the future could hold for us. But, but we can change that. We can make a difference. And the way that can happen is by getting vaccinated. Get your family vaccinated, get your friends vaccinated, get your students vaccinated, and get your coworkers vaccinated. That is and will only be the only way for us to get back to normal. Normal means having family Thanksgiving meals. Normal means meeting around the holiday table and just kicking back and holding hands and whatever it is that we do around the holiday. Normal means going back to our houses of worship and, and and being at peace in a place that we have missed for a year and a half. Normal is going to sports activities and going to the park as groups and families and not worrying about if someone next to us is asymptomatic. That is what normal is. And we can get there, Plainfield. We can do this. If you have any questions about vaccinations, the city of Plainfield has its own uh, hotline. And I will give you that number. It is 908-753. 3395. And those are just for individuals for Plainfield. They, they are dedicated to residents of Plainfield. And so if you have any questions, please, I beseech you. If we want to get back to normal, if we want to go back to the football games, if we want to picnic in the park, if we want to do any of those things that Plainfield is known for, we have to get vaccinated. Mayor Matt, thank you for this time and thank you for this opportunity uh, to speak about this. Well, thank you, Director Brown. It is indeed extremely important that our residents get vaccinated. So I appreciate you leading that effort. And I join you in the call to all of our residents to make sure they register and be vaccinated. And we will provide all of the assistance that you need to get you registered. The process is very easy, very simple. And don't hesitate to reach out to any one of the individuals that are on screen, reach out to my office, and we will facilitate you getting that vaccine in your arms. And we know that soon, kids 12 to 15 years old can also be vaccinated. So we will be targeting that age group as well. And Everything that we're talking about here this evening is important and contributes to how we move this city forward. 
But we all know that public safety has been and still is job number one for us. And so there have been concerns registered by members of our city and here to provide us with some information regarding our public safety efforts from the point of view of our Plainfield PD is Director Lisa Burgess. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. First, I wanna start out by presenting some statistics um, to when we're gonna, in the statistics I'm gonna present will be covering the 2013 through 2020. Um, hold on, I'm losing you here. The next slide, please. I'm sorry, I had to get my screen right. Every time they change the slide, my screen times out. So the numbers that we are covering here covers 2013 through 2020. These numbers are based on our, the violent crime and the nonviolent crime in our city. Violent crime consists of murders, manslaughter, rape, robbery, and aggravated assaults. The nonviolent crimes cover burglary, thefts, motor vehicles, uh, theft from motor vehicles and arson. Uh, in the area of violent crimes, as you can see, we looked at 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. From that time, the violent crime has gone down 49% and the nonviolent crime has gone down 44% with an overall crime going down by 45%. Currently, we are experiencing an increase in our shootings in the city. And I know this is a concern for everyone. We have increased patrol, visibility in those areas of concern. We are also working with the support of the Union County Prosecutor's Office, the Union County Sheriff's Department to uh, continue to solve these crimes and make our city safe. We're gonna continue to ask for the support of our community. I wanna continue to encourage those, if you have information to contact the police department, you can remain anonymous. Um, the information has been put out there for our tips line. Uh, the safety of our residents is going to continue to always be the most important thing to us. Um, I just want to continue to say that we are doing everything that we can to keep our community safe, to uh, the concerns of our residents. We hear you, we, um, we see you, and we just want to continue to bridge that gap between the police department and our community. Thank you, Mayor Matt. Well, thank you, Director Burgess, for that update. And now I will bring some remarks as it relates to the concerns that have been echoed by many of our residents. First, let me say that my heart bleeds every time there is an incident of violence in our city. None of us want to see any type of violence in our neighborhoods. And I want to express my heartfelt sympathy for all of the families that have been affected by the recent spike in violence. It is something that we don't tolerate, but it is something that needs each and every one of us. Everyone within the song of my voice who lives in Plainfield, we need you to help us. We need you to do all that you can to work with this administration so that together we could tackle this issue of violence in our city. If there's one incident of violence in our city, we have too much. We are aiming towards a city where we will eliminate, we would rid our community of violence. And we can do that in so many different ways. Parents, teachers, community leaders, churches, all of us have a shared responsibility. And so I call on the community to join us as we fight the scourge of crime in our neighborhoods. We want to protect our young people. We want to protect our seniors. 
We want to protect everything that is in plain field. So I can't tell you how much this hurts me to know that people are so caught up in violence that oftentimes innocent people get in, get hurt and it affects all of us. So my heartfelt sympathies go out to every person and we will continue to work hard with our Plainfield PD to provide the resources that are so desperately needed to fight crime on every level. And we need the voices of the community to be raised in partnership with this administration so that we could further address the issue of crime. Now, I, I mentioned that if we have one crime, we have one crime too many. But I can't diminish the value of the work that has been done by our Plainfield Police Department and by this administration. Over the years, the seven plus years that we have been working to move this city forward, you heard from Director Burgess what the numbers are. And we have driven crime down significantly. But I know to the parent who has lost a child, that is very hollow to talk about the fact that crime is down significantly. That family that has been affected doesn't feel that way because it is so deep and personal. So we understand that and we sympathize with every family that has been affected by violence. But we're gonna continue on our course to drive crime down even further and to provide our young people with the resources that they need with the guidance and with the help of you, the members of the community to help us rid our neighborhoods of the violent elements that have so pervasive in some parts of our city to the point where some of our residents don't feel safe as a result of the violent element that exists in our community. That does not mean that our community is not safe because the facts still speak for themselves. And if you look at the uniform crime statistics as were just discussed by our police director, you will know, you will see there's independent verifiable evidence that speak to the safety of our city in spite of the uptake in violence. So I call on every person in Plainfield to join me, join the Plainfield PD, join every member of this administration, join your neighbors and friends who genuinely care and want to rid our neighborhoods of crime. If we all do that by coming together in the best interest of our city, we will have a significant impact. And as the saying goes, if you see something, say something. The police can't do it alone. I can't do it by myself. This administration cannot do it by itself. It takes all of us coming together, working towards that common goal. And if we do that, we will be able to collectively address this very serious issue of crime. So I will not, we will not rest on our law rules in terms of what we've accomplished so far. We know that a job is not yet done and there's more work to be done. And we will work each and every day as hard as we can to tackle this very serious issue with your help. And with that, we will switch gears and move to the main topic of this evening's town hall. And that is the cannabis legislation and the businesses that will be created as a result of what you, the residents of our city, have voted for, have supported, and that is the legalization of cannabis to the tune of 76% of our residents. Now we wanna hear from you again 
in terms of which of the different businesses we ought to embrace for the further benefit of the community. And at this point, I will turn things over to our Director of Economic Development and to our Corporation Council to guide us through this portion of the town hall. Dave and Valerie, you're up. Mayor, I'm just going to take one second because we didn't we turned onto Facebook um, just briefly after after the Zoom started. So I just want to clear up one more. I just want to remind everyone of housekeeping for the process for asking questions. We're not going to be taking live questions. I see somebody has their hand up. So I just want to refresh everyone. We're not going to be taking live questions. Please type your question in the chat box. You can put your question either in English or in Spanish. Please make sure your question is related to the cannabis discussion that we're having this evening. You could either put your question in the chat box on, on the Zoom or in the Facebook comments, and we will have a question and answer portion in which we will read those questions and answer them. Also, one other point of clarification is that we had a technical difficulty getting onto YouTube. So this is being recorded. This is a Facebook Live and a Zoom. Thank you. And I'll send it over to Corporation Council Mancello. Thank you, BA Levinson. And, and thank you, Mayor Mapp, uh, for this opportunity uh, to begin this discussion. I'd like to just take an opportunity to lay out some broad strokes on the law. And I will also uh, be aided in that with uh, Director Valerie Jackson, our Director of Economic Development, who's gonna go into some more specifics. Um, we could just call up the first slide. Thank you. One second. Okay. Uh, I'll just like to start by saying this is an incredibly exciting time, uh, both in the state of New Jersey and in the city of Plainfield. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, uh, cannabis was uh, overwhelmingly approved uh, by both uh, the voters of New Jersey and Plainfield to legalize cannabis. Um, however, uh, the next step in the process has already taken place in that the governor in February of, of this year uh, signed into law legislation which sets out broadly the legal framework for the sale of cannabis in the state of New Jersey. Um, and as part of that legislation, the governor has given municipalities broad authority to determine which parts of the supply chain uh, a city wants to see and a city wants to allow, uh, allow for within its borders. Um, currently, there are six licenses uh, from the growing of cannabis all the way through delivery and sale. And Director Jackson is going to go through all of those uh, classes but it is up to each municipality to make the decision whether to allow for those classes of licenses or to uh, disapprove them. Ultimately, it will be up to the state to approve each individual license. So that will not be a municipal function. Um, however, the class of license can be approved or disapproved by each municipality. Um, and that uh, approval or disapproval would be a recommendation from the mayor and the administration uh, and would be approved by the city council. However, in this instance, uh, I wanna make clear that the mayor uh, has not moved to date on this legislation because he wanted very much to hear from the residents of Plainfield. Uh, and so tonight is part of our fact finding to determine what the residents of Plainfield are interested in. And we also have a survey going at the same time to help us form uh, our decision and help the mayor make a decision as to what to propose to the city council. Um, now, the uh, legalization of cannabis uh, has, as I see it, two uh, uh, main positives. Uh, one first being that it cures or that it begins to uh, uh, deal with the, uh, the, the, so, the uh, injustice that has gone on for so long uh, with the enforcement of, uh, of the criminal portion of uh, marijuana laws. However, the other great positive about the legalization of marijuana and cannabis 
is that there is an opportunity for each municipality to uh, gain uh, tax revenue uh, from that sale. So as you can see from the slide in front of you, we have an opportunity if we are to approve all six of those licenses to gain in some instances up to 2% of all the sales uh, with regard to those forms of licenses. This is an incredible, could be potentially incredible windfall for the city of Plainfield. Um, and as you, as you well know, every dollar that we can take in through tax revenue is one less dollar that we have to raise from the residents of Plainfield. So this is an exciting opportunity to raise revenue. Um, so I, you know, this is obviously important to us to explain these classes and uh, Director Jackson is going to do that. Um, but as we go through that, I, I'd ask everyone to recognize that there is an incredible opportunity for us to gain tax revenue. Um, the other important thing to note for anyone who has a concern, and I already saw in the chat room, uh, people are asking this question, the zoning laws of Plainfield will still remain in effect. Uh, whether we allow for retail or we allow, uh, we allow for wholesale, wholesalers or distributors, the, these will not be placed in residential communities. Uh, the law was very clear that, that zone, local zoning still holds and will not in any way be trumped by this legislation. Um, so with, say, with, with that being said, I'd like to turn it over to Director Jackson and she's gonna explain all the classes of licenses that are available to us. Um, and we are both available to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Mayor. Valerie. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, Plainville. Uh, we would like to share information tonight so that you can complete and provide us with input through the survey. The survey is on the city's website. And so you will provide us with input that will dr drive our decision making related to cannabis legislation. And so all municipalities have till August 21st of 2021 to adopt legislation related to cannabis. And so your, your input will help drive the decision-making. As it relates to zoning and land use, uh, this will follow the same processes that we normally do for ordinances, which is legislation. Uh, the council will direct the planning board to investigate. The planning board will come back with recommendations in terms of where facilities are to go. If you decide you want that type of facility in Plainfield and then council will have to adopt an ordinance related to the zoning uh, for cannabis. So there are six classes of cannabis. And so I'd like to go through the first one, class one, is called a cannabis cultivator. That's where you have a grow facility. You can grow, cultivate, or produce cannabis in Plainfield, and you can sell it to other cannabis growers, processors, wholesalers, or retailers. But if you are a grower, you cannot sell to consumers. So it's a business to business sale, business to business sale. Cannabis manufacturer is class two, and that is where you process cannabis items and you obtain usable cannabis manufacturing, you engage in manufacturing, preparing and packaging cannabis items and selling it. Again, you cannot sell to consumers under this classification. It's a business to business sale. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, class three is a cannabis wholesaler. And this is where you purchase or otherwise obtain, store, sell, or otherwise transfer cannabis products. You may transfer those cannabis items for the purpose of resale. So you're transferring those to either a wholesaler or a retailer. Again, it's a business to business transaction. 
this does not, it cannot be sold to consumers when you have a class three license. The next license is a class four license. And this is where you are a cannabis distributor. You transport cannabis items in bulk interstate from one licensed cannabis establishment to another licensed cannabis establishment. And you may engage in the temporary storage of cannabis uh, as necessary to carry out your business activities. Again, you are not selling directly to the consumer under this license classification. Next slide, please. Class five is a cannabis retailer. This is where you can sell cannabis products directly to the consumer out of a retail store or facility. And this is where you can, again, directly sell to the consumer. Class six, the next slide, please. Class six is cannabis delivery. And a municipality cannot prohibit cannabis delivery to residents in its town. And the cannabis delivery service is a licensed delivery service that delivers to a person or a retail establishment. And so again, you have to be licensed by the state of New Jersey. So all of these classes of licenses come from the state of New Jersey. What the city has to do is say, we have these types of facilities in these locations. And so we're seeking your input to see if you want any of these businesses or all of these businesses to be a part of the city of Plainfield. And as Dave uh, Mancello described, there is revenue in it for the city. So there is an opportunity for the city to gain revenue as a result of these types of businesses in the city of Plainfield. And again, we're seeking your input related to these types of businesses. And the way to do that is to complete that online survey by going to the city's website to share with us what you would like to see in the city of Plainfield. Once that occurs, and let's say you say, I want to see uh, cannabis wholesale in the city of Plainfield, then we will uh, go to council, direct the planning board to say where these facilities can be located. So like any other type of zoning, so it'll tell what is permitted where. And again, it's Dave, uh, discussed earlier, uh, we're not placing them in residential neighborhoods. If we are allowed to do this, we're not placing them in school near schools. So again, this is pretty straightforward in terms of these are new businesses that could be allowed in the city of Plainfield. And then we would create where those businesses are permitted and uh, propose that to council and then they would adopt legislation. Thank you. Uh, and I guess we're open to questions now, Jazz. Um, not quite. Not, 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 not quite yeah, yet. not yet, Valerie. We'll get there very soon. Um, so I want to bring up the survey that we have on our website at this time so that we could speak briefly about it and give our residents a sense as to what the response has been as of this moment in time. Jazz, please bring up the survey. And if you can make that a bit bigger, it would help my eyes. The first question for those of you, a little bit bigger, please. For those of you who have seen the survey, um, this first question has to do with whether or not there should be any growing facilities in our city. 
and the response that we have so far to this question by a vote of 53.57%, those participating in the survey has indicated yes. And that's to that first question. We'll go to the second question. And if Jazz can make it bigger for me, that would <laughs> So if you scroll down, the second question has to do with the manufacturing facilities and those who participated voted by a vote of 57.14% in favor of allowing the manufacturing of cannabis in our city. Let's go to the next. This deals with the wholesaling of cannabis facilities that will participate in the wholesaling business. So if we go to the results, we will see that uh, pretty consistent with the other two by a 57 to 29% or so margin, the residents are in favor of this section of the cannabis business. Let's go to the next. As it relates to the distribution, our residents have voted 60.7, you can round that to 61% in favor of this line of business. Let's go to the next. And I believe this might be the final question on the survey, Jazz. As far as the retailing of cannabis is concerned, our residents so far have said by a margin, again, 61% are in favor. Um, have I touched on all of the sections of the survey, Jazz? Yes, Mayor, those are all the questions that were presented. So you can see those of you who were able to read it, but this will all be published and be on our website and the voting will continue. But by and large, by anywhere from 55 to 61% of our residents who have already participated in the survey are in favor of the city participating in all sections of the cannabis business. So we will be guided by the wishes and the desires of our residents who recognize the importance of the city aligning itself with the majority of our residents who have voted on legalization and we can see the trend so far from this survey is moving in that direction in terms of these different types of businesses. And so we will give you the final results of the survey when the results are in and can vary or jazz tell us when we expect to close this survey. Jazz. Uh the, I was, Valerie, I'll take your direction on that. I'm not sure how long you wanted it to run for. Okay, yes. I would say it should run through the end of the month so that we can prepare the legislation for council. I May 31st. Mm -hmm. I think that makes sense. May 31st is the last day that you can register your opinion on this poll and we will be so guided. So. I thank all of those who have participated in the survey so far, and we look forward to additional participation from across all four corners of our city. Um, I'm sorry, Jazz, can you just remind everyone where to access the survey so that they know? Yeah, we're gonna put the link in the chat. Oh, great. Okay. We're gonna put the link in the chat, in, a, in just give it two minutes. Okay, okay. all right. 
And before we move on to answering the questions that have been posted in the chat, um, you saw the benefits of us participating in this business, how we can generate revenues. And you saw that we recently adopted our budget and our focus, one of them in terms of what we look to do for our residents is to stabilize taxes. And the way we do that is by bringing in developers, bringing in economic development. But now this is an opportunity for us to enhance our revenues. And the budget of the last two years showed that we are able to stabilize taxes if we can generate revenues. And so in 2020, we stabilized taxes and we drove taxes down. Our municipal taxes went down. Just last night, the council adopted a 2021 budget. And again, taxes were further reduced to all of our property owners in the city. That is the municipal taxes that we control. So it is important that we are able to generate revenues because that is how we're able to stabilize taxes and drive taxes down wherever and whenever possible. So that is one of the importance of supporting the establishment of cannabis business in our city. And with that- we Mayor, can I add to that? Please do. I would also add as the economic director, economic development director, that it also creates new businesses for the city and jobs. So there are business opportunities uh, for Plainfield residents as well as jobs. I'm glad that you made that point because that's a very important consideration. Jobs and business opportunities for our residents. And so with that, we will now turn to the questions that have been raised so far. We'll do our best to provide responses and any of the members of the team that are present this evening can feel free to answer the questions as they're raised. I will do my best, but as you know, I don't have all the answers. You have some of the answers and that's why we are a team. But let's hear the questions. Okay, Mayor, so the first question that I have is that I see here, um, I, 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 there's a question about the address of each cannabis public selling site in Plainfield, but to my knowledge, there's, there are none of those yet. So we're not, I'm gonna skip to the next question that says, I wanna know about the six classes of, well, that we covered that in the, in the presentation. I believe this was asked before we got to the presentation, the six classes of licenses and how and who it's offered to. Well, let's stop there for a second. We will post this information on the website in term, and on social media, a summary of the different classes of licenses that can be um, created in the city. But it's important for you to know that the licenses are not gonna be issued by this administration. The licenses are going to be issued by the state of New Jersey. So I think our listeners and our viewers need to know that, that it is not the mayor and the city council that are going to be issuing licenses. That's all done at the state level. So keep that in mind. And mayor, if, if I could just add on to that, I, I noticed that there were a lot of questions with regard to the criteria for those licenses. How can I get one? We are still waiting for guidance from the state. Uh, the state has created a commission which will issue those licenses, but they also will establish the criteria for getting a license. We do not, as, we, as of today, we do not yet have guidance from the state on the criteria for those licenses. So I noticed there were a lot of questions on that, but unfortunately we can't provide answers at this time. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, they have a qu there's a question about the health and quality of life considerations related to each type of cannabis business for example, like a manufacturer near a residential community, could there be any type of um, odor, environmental contamination due to manufacturing process? 
um, like, for example, what happens with other businesses. Uh, this, no, go ahead. Yes, Larry, go ahead. I have uh, personally been in a growth facility here in New Jersey for medical uh, cannabis. And so, no, you cannot smell anything from the outside. Um, everything is contained within the building. And unless you enter the building, you don't even know what's going on inside of the building. Uh, so we have Garden State uh, Floral uh, in Woodbridge that is currently a growth facility. And this industry is gonna be highly regulated. So all of the protections are gonna be in place to make sure that there isn't any kind of harmful impacts as a result of this business coming into the state or into our city. And, and Mayor, if I could also add that in, in any instance where the type of facility did not fit the character or zoning of that neighborhood, it would we would still have the ability as a municipality to say that it was not an appropriate place, even if that class were acceptable. Okay, the next question says, are there plans to reserve some licenses from any approved classes for new or existing plain field business owners or will external vendors or companies have equal access to plain field licenses? Again, let us point out that we are not the one, we mean in the city, this administration and members of the governing body, we are not the ones that are issuing the licenses. I would recommend to those that are interested in this business to make sure that you retain an attorney who will help you navigate the application process and be able to advocate on your behalf. I think that's gonna be important. The city will not be issuing licenses, the state will. Okay. Um... So uh, Cynthia Hush wants to know how does it work and how much it costs to open up this type of business? Again, that's not a question that we can answer. It all depends on the level of sophistication and how you want to position yourself in the market. I think that will determine what costs you will incur. Um, you might choose to go on a marketing campaign. You might choose to have, you know, visually speaking, the best um, curbside business possible that will influence the cost of your business. So those are not questions that we can answer. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm going through a lot of these and I see a lot of duplicates. So I'm just skipping and going down. And some of these questions have already been answered. So I'm just trying to go through and find um, the new ones. Um, uh, someone wants to know how long it will be between when the voting ends and the draft of the ordinance. Let me answer that. Uh, it would be our intent to have uh, the council direct the planning board at the June 14th council meeting and that the planning board would be meeting on this in June and that we would recommend an ordinance uh, for first reading in July and second reading in August. So it's a pretty quick time frame. Um, someone wants to know if you can share what the cost of the licenses are. We don't know at this point what the cost will be. We have not gotten any direction from the state. Uh, Mayor, if I can, I think there's something, though, another portion to this cannabis regulatory framework that we haven't discussed yet. I think it's important to mention that uh, plain, there are 565 municipalities in New Jersey. Only 23 of them were given the designation of an impact zone. Plainfield uh, has been named as an impact zone. What does that get the city of Plainfield? What it does gets us is that 70% of the state revenue collected 
for uh, by ca the cannabis industry, all the tax revenue across the state, 70% will be redistributed amongst the 23 municipalities uh, that are determined that are that have been deemed to be impact zones. Now, that's not to say that we get 123rd of all of that money. However, there's going to be grants, programs, opportunities for businesses, also licenses uh, or uh, businesses that attempt to get licenses will be given preferential criteria when they apply for those licenses. So it's a really exciting uh, designation for Plainfield because we are going to have additional tax dollars coming to help not only the city, but help, our, help those cannabis businesses as they attempt to succeed in our municipality. Um, and I believe you addressed this, but maybe you need to reiterate it. It asks, does the state have a set number of licenses it will issue like alcohol licenses? And is there any guarantee that Plainfield will receive any licenses at all? I believe you addressed that already. We, we, we certainly will get licenses. It will not be regular. It will not be limited in the way in which a, a liquor license is currently limited. Um, we don't have we don't have clear. Uh, obviously, we don't have regulations yet from the uh, Cannabis Commission, but uh, all indications are that it will not. Uh, it, it will not exist in the way in which a liquor license is and in the way in which it can be sold from entity to entity. Okay, the next question is, uh, will the city of Plainfield reserve a certain percentage of prime business locations for Plainfield uh, residents and our smaller business owners? Um, so some huge conglomerate can't come in and scoop the best locations for themselves. Uh the city of Plainfield is open uh, to, you know, retail locations are gonna be very different than wholesale uh, grow facilities, those kinds of facilities. The people who are looking at grow facilities and whole, wholesale are looking at large industrial sites. So they were formerly used as industrial sites. Uh, we will look strategically at, uh, at the downtown locations as it relates to retail. And so again, we're not holding anything, but we will look strategically about where that's permitted. And I just wanna add one thing, well, two things actually. One is that I see the question, um, I, and I know we did answer this, but I see that it, it keeps being asked about delivery. And if, you know, if Westfield has, uh, delivery will, will it be able to will they be able to deliver in Plainfield and yes that is something that we are not able to prevent even if let's say even if we were to decide that we're not going to allow any of the classes here we cannot opt out of delivery there will be marijuana has been legalized in the state of New Jersey and we will have to always allow for delivery in the city of Plainfield while this legislation is in place and the second thing I wanna just briefly touch on is I'm getting the sense that some of these questions are asking is the spirit of the administration, not necessarily can we commit to this right now, but is the spirit of this administration to have a population of business owners that are residents of our community, that are business owners that have, you know, that have invested in Plainfield previously that are clearly committed to our city. And I, I want to reiterate on behalf of the mayor, on behalf of the entire administration that, you know, Plainfield first, we, we believe in our residents, we believe in our businesses, we're not looking to have a big conglomerate come and eat up, you know, get all of the opportunity. So I think that's what the spirit behind some of these questions are. And I just want to address that. Yeah. And if, I could, and if I could, if there's any way that any of us on this call could help any business uh, throughout the process for providing information or uh, assisting with any support, all of us on this call, uh, I think I speak for, for the entire administration saying we would be happy to help in any way we could. Let me just, at this point, I know that we had a Jeanette on this Zoom as well. And I am sure there are a number of Latinos in the listening audience. So uh, Jeanette, feel free at any time after the answers and the questions have been raised to uh, translate as you choose. 
Okay, Mayor, thank you. I guess I, I, I could summarize what has been said so far. I have taken some notes. Uh, muy buenas noches, queridísimos residentes. Sabemos que hay mucha curiosidad sobre la legislación que se aprobó del cannabis. Hay muchas oportunidades de información sobre la encuesta para las diferentes licencias. Hay seis dif diferentes licencias, pero esta encuesta al final de este mes, mayo 31, va a terminar donde todos los residentes tienen la oportunidad de votar y escoger la clase de licencia. En la página cibernética de la ciudad de Plainfield y en, inclusive en, este, en, en el chat, en la conversación, ya dieron el enlace para que usted lo pueda hacer. Eso es una. Otra, pues las preguntas que están haciendo es, la gente está muy preocupada en cuanto a la oportunidad de los que ya tienen un negocio establecido. No tienen que preocuparse, las licencias van a ser eh, dadas, van a ser facilitadas por el estado de Nueva Jersey, no por la ciudad de Plainfield, después de la legislación que va a ser alrededor de tres meses. Sin embargo, esto va a ser un proceso muy lento, pero el, todo el estado de Nueva Jersey ya aprobó el uso del cannabis. Hay otra pregunta que es muy interesante en cuanto a el repartir la entrega del cannabis. No importa dónde usted viva, si usted tiene o quiere establecer un negocio fuera de la ciudad de Plenfield, la ciudad de Plenfield no va a instruir o no va a negar que usted pueda repartir el cannabis. Eh, otra cosa que el alcalde también mencionó, las ventas van a, a dar un 2% a, de impuestos hacia la ciudad de Plenfield. Eso significa que esto va a regenerar ganancia. También la venta de estos negocios o el establecimiento de estos negocios van a generar empleos para todos los residentes de Plainfield. Y eso quiere decir más empleos, los impuestos van a ser reducidos. I think I pretty much got it, Mayor. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. I am sure that the Latino members of our community are appreciative of that translation so they get to be a part of what is happening this evening. So let us continue with the question, Jad. Um, Mayor, can I add one comment, uh, which I do want to add, is that the cannabis business uh, in the state of New Jersey, as well as across the country, is very competitive. Uh, if you are serious about getting into the cannabis arena, I do suggest that you do some research. One of those things is the New Jersey Cannabis Association. You can Google the New Jersey Cannabis Association to get a lot of education and information about what is available. I also suggest that you go to the state's website and also search on cannabis uh, to learn more about how to open a business regarding all of this. Again, what has been done with medical marijuana is probably a good example. This is gonna be a very heavily regulated industry. And I just wanted to add New Jersey Cannabis Association for information and education. Uh, I certainly don't uh, uh, say that I'm the cannabis expert, <laughs> but I do know that there is where you, there's information out there and you have to uh, go out there and get that information. I'd like to uh, translate that. Hay una asociación, la Asociación de New Jersey del Cannabis les va a proveer a ustedes muchísima importancia. Otra de las cosas que se me olvidó mencionar es que hay personas que están preocupadas en cuanto a la zonificación. No se preocupe porque una vez aprobados los negocios, con mucho cuidado, el, el concejal de la ciudad de Plainfield va a planificar muy bien en dónde van a ser establecidos, cosa que no se tienen que preocupar si lo van a poner cerca de colegios, de las escuelas o lugares prohibidos de esta manera. Otra pregunta también, una persona que quería saber el olor. No se preocupen porque la directora de Desarrollo Económico, Valerie Jackson, ella ya visitó un lugar donde la estaban cultivando 
y ella ni siquiera se po de lo que estaban haciendo hasta que entró dentro de la facilidad. Así que no se tienen que preocupar tampoco de esto. Thank you. Okay, Jazz. Okay, um, the next question comes from Facebook and the question is, uh, will the, I'm assuming they're speaking about retail locations, will it be allowed downtown as Plainfield is primarily residential? Or I'm not sure if you're talking about the manufacturing as well. Uh, the, the retail, uh, like I said, will be uh, strategic and uh, we have a, a downtown corridor as well as um, uh, South Avenue. So we will be looking at it strategically. The planning board will be making a set of recommendations, but I suspect there will be some relocate, retail locations downtown. Okay. And the next one I believe we um, was addressed during um, the presentation asking, will there be jobs generated for residents? And I know that you, you address that, Valerie, which you can answer again. <laughs> yes, now that is something that we can uh, uh, put into uh, uh, negotiations and contracts with uh, people who will be opening cannabis facilities to talk about local sourcing for jobs, uh, local sourcing for materials and those kinds of things, so yes. Um, so there is a question, I'm not sure exactly what it means, but it says how long between now and the requirements of zoning and ordinances? I know there was a question about the ordinances before, but now it's talking about zoning. So I'm not sure if that's a different question. We have to adopt those ordinances by August 21st. So it's pretty short term. Uh, there are some towns who've already moved forward. Uh, so we're not starting from scratch. Uh, but we do, uh, based on the input that we received from residents tonight, uh, we'll be uh, drafting ordinances uh, for first presentation at the July council meeting and again at the August council meeting. And if I could just add one thing, if, if we take no action as a municipality, all of the classes of licenses are deemed to be valid. So we would have to take the affirmative step to regulate a class. Um, so, uh, if, if you don't see an ordinance or you don't see a specific class, it may be that we are allowed, we are moving forward with that specific class and not disallowing it. Okay. The next question, um, not sure if we'll be able to answer, but it says, what are the downsides, if any, of legalizing each of these classes? <laughs> so not sure, uh, how you answer that. I personally don't know of any downside to legalizing any of these classes of licenses. Um, I think one can look at that through the lenses that one might look at if you talked about alcohol and, you know, whiskey versus rum versus brandy versus you know tequila and so on and so forth that's how i see it so i don't see a downside regarding any of these different classes of licenses that's just my personal view others might think differently i don't uh, mayor i agree with you i don't see a downside in providing but i do see a downside in not providing uh we will experience retail leakage so people are going to go and shop in other communities for uh, cannabis uh, at retail stores. Uh, so there will be leakage if we do not enable some of these uh, licenses. Uh, uh, other communities will get the jobs that we are targeting uh, and uh, other communities will get the businesses as well. So from our perspective, there's a downside to not taking action. And there will be benefits to other businesses as well by having the foot traffic to support the cannabis business. They will buy things from other area businesses as well. And Mayor, I just want to add to that, that we, we're already aware that some of our sister municipalities, sister and brother municipalities that border us have opted out of some of these classes. And so by bringing in these classes into Plainfield, 
we know that we would get the foot traffic of those other municipality residents coming here and you know, then shopping at our stores and eating at our restaurants. Um, so, th so that's one benefit we want to think about. Okay, um, I'm going to ask the next question and then I'll pause Jeanette so you can do your yes. translation. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the question is, could any of these licenses lead to increased crime in Plainfield? And I think the same person asked, what are the 23 impact zones? So if we could answer those two and then we can pause for Jeanette. So if someone can take that, I will be back in 30 seconds. Okay. Well, uh, you want us to answer that first or, or allow Jeanette to translate the question? Uh, go ahead, Dave, and then we'll go to Jeanette after you ask. I have a list. Uh, I don't know if it's exhaustive of the 23 zones. Uh, Atlantic, I'll, I'll read the ones that, that I, I have available to me right now. Atlantic City, Bridgeton, Camden, East Orange, Elizabeth, Franklin Township in Somerset County, Jersey City, Irvington, uh, Millville, Newark, New Brunswick, Orange, Passaic, Patterson, Perth Amboy, Plainfield, uh, Salem, Trenton, and Vineland. Uh, there may be a couple more, but those are the ones I have available to me. Yeah, Jeanette, if you could go ahead with the translation. Okay, now, uh, the, very, the very last uh, question. Maybe I misunderstood that question. They wanted to know if it would increment crime. Was that the question? If or it could lead to increased crime in Plainfield, if any of the licenses could lead to that. Right. That's a very difficult question to answer. Yeah, I, I, I oh, don't I, think that the licenses will, uh, uh, this is my opinion. Uh, I don't think that the licenses will lead to uh, increased crime um, because we're talking about business classifications for the most part that don't sell to consumers uh, with the exception of retail. Uh, retail is uh, open to consumers and so, you know, it in some regards are is akin to alcohol consumption. I, I just want to say, I think that's a philosophical question that, you know, we don't have data on at this time, because the same argument could be made that by keeping marijuana illegal is increasing crime because it, you know, it, it creates a underground market for illegal drugs. So it, it's really a philosophical debate and we don't have any data to, to speak to it. Okay. I think a good argument can be made that it would lead to a further reduction as a result of removing the, illeg the illegality from the process, thereby bringing those who would have been inclined to go on the street corner to come into the retail establishment. So I think it would, there's a strong argument that it would reduce crime as opposed to increase. Ok, thank you. Bueno, queridísimos residentes, pues eh, seguimos dando más información. Otra pregunta que querían saber más o menos el área en la ciudad de Plainfield donde se va a establecer los negocios. Estos negocios en este momento están siendo estudiados y están más o menos planificando por la South Avenue y el centro de Nueva Jersey para va a ser un plan muy estratégico. Todo tiene un principio y todo va a ser planificado con mucho cautela. Otra persona, eh, otra vez quería saber sobre los negocios. Los, entre más negocios, no quiere decir que se va a hacer una cantidad demasiada enumerada, pero van a traer trabajos a la ciudad de Plainfield, cosa que los residentes van a ser siempre los que van a tener la prioridad para tener trabajo. Por ende, van a haber más ventas y va a haber reducción de impuestos. La ordenanza se va a adoptar el, el 21 de agosto. Esto es un proceso de tres meses, pero la fecha que ya ha sido marcada va a ser para el 21 de agosto. Querían saber si debido a estas licencias del cannabis va a haber reducción de alguna otra licencia. Ejemplo, la licencia del alcohol. No, por supuesto que no. Las licencias van a seguir con el mismo efecto. Un comentario que se hizo muy importante, el alcalde Eduardo Maplo hizo sobre 
la fuga de ventas de negocios y la directora Valerie Jackson también lo comentó. Si nosotros optamos por no tener esta clase de ventas, esto va a afectar también los otros negocios. ¿Por qué? Porque las personas que sí están interesadas en tener esta clase de negocios van a ir a otras ciudades. ¿Qué pasa? Entre menos personas o menos tráfico peatonal nosotros tengamos aquí en la ciudad de Plainfield, no solamente vamos a perder las ventas del cannabis, pero también va a haber ventas de todos los mayores y preciosos negocios que tenemos aquí en la ciudad de Plainfield. Van a visitar a todos los otros negocios de ventas al por menor, van a visitar a tantos y variados restaurantes con esa comida tan sabrosa. Entonces, eso es lo que queremos, que la ciudad de Plenty siga abierta para todo el mundo. Y una persona también quería saber, ¿será posible que aumente el crimen? Es una pregunta un tanto difícil. Sin embargo, también se estaba comentando, como cualquier otro negocio, como venta de cigarrillo, como una venta de, la, de licor, no tenemos que poner, no podemos asegurarlo que ese va a ser el, el impacto. No se trata de las ventas, se trata de todo el cuidado que se ha mantenido, el orden y nuestro departamento de policía siempre está al frente. We will answer as many questions as we can in the next 12 minutes and we will bring the town hall to a close by 7:30. Okay, mayor. So the next um, question I So Uh, it says, how does this change police dealing with illegal marijuana? There is some biological difference between the two types, as I recall. So I assume some varieties are still illegal. I don't know if Valerie can speak to that. Uh, the, the state sets the standard for the quality of the cannabis. And trust me, they have looked at that very, very closely. So the state Uh, will set the standards in terms of the quality of the cannabis product uh, that growth facilities will have to uh, achieve. Uh, again, uh, it's not new to the state. There are communities uh, where medical marijuana is grown today and has been. So Montclair, Woodbridge, Jersey City, So the state will set those standards and all of those facilities have standards. And I will tell you after being in one, I know that the state uh, monitor them 24 by seven. So there are cameras and eyes looking at those facilities at all times. Okay, next question from Facebook says, are you benchmarking with any towns that are further ahead in this process to leverage their learning so far And if so, which towns have you spoken with? I can address that. And I'm, I'm sure maybe Valerie can jump in if she knows more than I do, which I'm sure is the case. Uh, but um, no one is further along as far as having actual uh, classes being issued because the state hasn't given any out any license yet or set the criteria for those licenses. However, I can say that uh, certain communities around us have opted out or regulated it. Uh, for instance, Scotch Plains, has allowed uh, their all classes, uh, but only, I'm sorry, has only allowed retail staff, a retail cannabis on the 22, Route 22 corridor. Uh, Westfield, is my understanding, has disallowed it completely. Um, I'm not aware of any of the other neighboring communities. I'm happy if anyone else wants to jump in on that, but that's my understanding as action taken to date uh, of our nearest neighbors. Okay, thanks, Dave. Um, the next question says, what is the city doing to help the city residents who have been incarcerated for past and current minor marijuana offenses before we license these facilities in the city? Uh, well, I, I can speak to that. Uh, very broadly, I'll state that the, the legislation, not only did it allow for the regulation of the industry, but it also allowed for expungements of marijuana offenses. Um, I, I don't want to give any legal advice to anyone specifically. I, I recommend that they speak to a criminal attorney, uh, but for certain marijuana offenses, there is immediate uh, expungement. For other marijuana offenses, there is a three-year waiting period. So uh, I recommend that if anyone uh, 
has a prior conviction or arrest for marijuana and so wants an expungement, uh, under this law, new law, they may have uh, additional remedies. So I recommend that they see an attorney immediately. I would also like to add to uh, response to this question. Uh, the New Jersey Urban Mayors Association, which Mayor Mapp is the vice president of, has been an advocate for the past two years on social justice around cannabis legislation, both for expungement as well as for access to these licenses. So I am certain that when they do uh, come out, there will be at least uh, some social justice element associated with the issuance of the licenses. And like I said, the Urban Mayors Association has been a real advocate around social justice. Thanks, Valerie. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so someone wants to know if uh, the taxes, if I am assuming they mean the prices, will be set in such a way so as not to price the legal cannabis sufficiently higher than street cannabis because uh, they're saying they've heard that medical cannabis um, costs a lot and um, might not be able to compete with the legal market. Um, so. Um, I'll take a stab at that. And Dave, if you want to, you can weigh in. Mm -hmm. But we're not talking about price controls here. Um, this is an industry where we are able to assess a 1%, a 2% tax on licenses. And we are able to do that as a result of the legislation. I don't think there are any price controls in the legislation. But Dave, if you know anything you're, differently. You're please absolutely please. right, Mayor. There are no price controls in legislation. Will, will the regulations that come out from the state have something different? We don't know, but as it stands today, the le current legislation doesn't set any price controls. Um, so that, I don't see any other questions. I do wanna say that um, although to Dave's point, we're not giving any legal um, advice, we did post some resources on our website as to where people can go and get guidance on expungement. So if you go to the website, you'll be able to see that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we will also post the presentations that were discussed here this evening for the benefit of those who might want to review those documents. And when all is said and done with the survey, those results will be posted as well. Any final comments from any members of the team before I wrap? Uh, can I just Trans translate that translation? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, ya para, antes de que el alcalde se despida, quisiera hacer los últimos comentarios que se hicieron. Eh, quería saber si había alguna variedad y, o normas en cuanto a la calidad de la marihuana, que sería la diferencia entre la marihuana médica como la ilegal. No eh, existe eh, ninguna competencia. Pero sí se ha mencionado que del 1 al 2% es lo que se va a, sería afectar o beneficiar a los impuestos según los ingresos de las ventas. Nuestras ciudades vecinas han adoptado, algunas de las ciudades vecinas han adoptado ya lo que es a, las ventas al por menor. También eh, se mencionó sobre el crimen, el crimen que por ciertas ofensas eh, ya han sido sobre eh, la marihuana. En la página cibernética usted puede encontrar información y también usted puede consultar a su abogado sobre los, los crímenes, sobre las multas, todo lo que sea, eh, si usted ha sido o ha recibido un cargo, esto va a ser eliminado. Pero usted tiene que averiguarlo con su abogado y puede también verificarlo en la página web de la ciudad de Plainfield. Eso es todo. Que pasen muy buenas noches. Y entonces los dejo a, al alcalde Adrian Omar. Thank you for your translation services. I'm Jeanette. Mm -hmm. And thanks to all of the members of the team who participated in this evening's um, presentation. And since recreation is always on our minds, 
I like to give Superintendent Taylor the opportunity to give some closing remarks relative to our recreation program. I mean, oh, <laughs> thank you, Mayor. I appreciate the opportunity. You know, I can never say enough about parks and recreation. I just want to remind the residents of the city of Plainfield that the parks are open. We just want everyone to enjoy them safely. Please adhere to the guidelines. Wear your masks outside. Masks save lives. Please stay six feet away. Stay within your own social grouping. And that'll help us keep everyone safe so we can keep these parks open. And just a note about the pools. Yes, they're going to open. We're so excited. Our work, I, did, I forgot to mention this before, but our workforce development program of lifeguard recruitment is going on now. We have our next lifeguard class in the month of June. So if you're 15 and you swim, you know somebody 15 and they swim, I need them and I need to train them to be a lifeguard. We pay a very competitive rate and we're a wonderful employer and we're a great first job. So please consider helping me staff the pools. And just a reminder, our, all our programs can be accessed through community paths. Due to COVID-19, we must be able to provide contact tracing to the health department for all our events to keep everyone safe. So that's why the drive-in fireworks, you must sign up on community paths. That's why you must sign up on community paths for the free pool membership. I know it's going to look a little different than it has in the past, but don't worry. You will be welcome as soon as you get there. We're going to have giveaways for our first day of opening and just like before. And if you forgot to sign up before you get there, no worries. I'm going to have the computer there and we're going to give you your membership on the spot. But adults, please be aware. You must create the community pass membership for the minors. Youth 12 and under must be accompanied by an adult to the pool. That's going to be a major change this year. But communities, you know, the community, we know we have to keep our kids safe. So I'm sure that's not going to be a problem. So I look forward to seeing you, yours, and everyone at the pools and at the parks this summer. Thank you, Mayor, for closing remarks. I appreciate it. Thank you, Superintendent Taylor. And uh, Director Burgess, on the public safety side, any last minute, please, to our residents? Okay, you're muted. Yes, sir, thank you. Again, I would like to just say to our residents that your safety in our community is the utmost importance to the Plainfield Police Department. And just know that we will continue to do everything that we can do to keep our community safe. Thank you, Mayor. All right. And to Director Brown, when is our next vaccine clinic? Actually, our next vaccine clinic is tomorrow. And we still have opportunity to, uh, uh, if you want a vaccination, just call the number that has been posted on our website and we'd be glad to uh, make sure that arrangement happens. Uh, and finally, just, just, just to get back to life like we know, just like get back to where we wanna be, let's just get vaccinated and tested, wear our masks, wash our hands and keep socially distanced. We can do this Plainfield, we can definitely do this. Thank you, Mayor Matt. And when might a parent be able to get his or her 12 to 15 year old child vaccinated? So we should be hearing about that by Friday. Uh, the final notice about 12 year olds getting tested right now, 16 year olds can get tested. Uh, I was on a call today uh, discussing that, uh, the process and what that would look like. It would totally be different uh, than if an uh, adult would go get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. The parent must go with the child and there's extra forms that have to be filled out, uh, but we're all looking forward to doing it. So as uh, soon as we have final information, I know there's a, there may be a testing going, I mean, a vaccination going on this Saturday at the high school, uh, there may be. So I just have to get some final information on that, but we are preparing to begin vaccinating uh, individuals as young as 12. Uh, business administrator, any uh, closing words? I just want to say that we really appreciate all of the residents who are participating in the survey. One final push for everyone to please participate in the survey. That's your opportunity to have your voice heard in this conversation. And I'm, I'm really glad that we're making this decision collaboratively and that uh, our residents have the opportunity to participate in this decision with us. This is a, this is a historical moment. So thank you for, for you know, participating. Well, th well, thanks to all of the members of the administrative team that are present here this evening. 
I can't say how much I appreciate all of the work that you do serving the residents of our city each and every day and why revenues are so critically important. There's nothing like a no tax increase budget or like a reduction in taxes. And so we want to bring more revenues into our city so we can continue to provide tax relief to our residents. And I wanna thank the council and the administration for delivering the second no tax increase budget, the second tax reduction in two years. Thanks to each and every one of you. May God continue to bless you and your families and may God continue to bless Plainfield. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>